Hi, my name is Andy Malone. Welcome to this session, 20,000 Leagues Under Conditional Access. Azure AD Conditional Access is by far one of the greatest security features that uh, Microsoft have come out with in recent years. Um, and we're going to spend a little bit of time uh, in the next wee while understanding exactly what it is and how it works. So who am I? Well, my name is Andy Malone. I'm a Microsoft MVP and Microsoft Certified Trainer. Uh, for 22 years. Um, I also train uh, all across the world. Um, I'm also an author as well. I write novels as well as security books uh, and so on. First of all, I want to ask you a question. What's wrong with this picture? Well, you're looking at lots of different logon screens. And for the last 30 years, this is pretty much the way it's been. Um, all that's been needed to gain access to a system is a user's name, a username and password. And you can see from Wind very early versions of Windows to uh, Prism to Novell to Google, it's the way many, many organizations do things today. The problem with this, though, is that once you're into the system, um, there is no further checks. So in essence, once you're through the door, you've got a pretty much a free reign to do whatever you want. So um, it's very much like this. So the next slide shows me a, a door to a, an office building. Now that we're in the office building, we see um, a desk, a reception desk. So on the subject of identity and authentication, for of course, when we enter a building or we enter a system, we need to be authenticated. And we typically authenticate ourselves through some form of ID. So for example, if I'm flying on a plane, I go to the airport, I have my airline ticket, which is my authorization. And to prove who I am, I typically have my passport. Once I'm in the building, of course, there are a number of checks that you can put in. You could have physical security guards to check your identity, um, or you might have something like this, some kind of gate system that permits access. This is pretty good in security because this would kind of prevent uh, things like piggybacking. So somebody trying to, an unauthorized user, uh, trying to get in at the back of you. So the next slide shows um, what it's like once you get into a building. So we're standing at a door with a smart card uh, on a keypad. And I think this really represents and gives an idea of what conditional access is. So once you're in the building, we can have further checks and balances against who can access specific areas of the building. Again, the example of the airport solution. So you get into an airport, but you don't necessarily have access to all the different areas. So the problem here is that we shouldn't simply just focus on entry. So here we can see a user logging in and the user gains access to the logon screen. So traditional security, the user is either authenticated or is denied traditional access. So you might think of a solution might be, okay, well, the username and password is pretty much going the way of the dinosaur these days. What's coming in in its place? Multi-factor authentication. So multi-factor authentication, you can have a number of elements that will help you uh, further authenticate. So for example, you can, uh, receive a push notification from a service provider. You might receive a, an SMS message, a, a voice call, or you might get an OAuth token or some kind of um, a code received through your mobile device using, let's say, the Microsoft Authenticator. Now, the problem with this, I mean, this is great again for authentication, but at this point, passwords, of course, are, are awesome because it's just authentication. So this prevents obviously usernames and passwords from being stolen because it's looking for that physical device, um, that physical something um, that a hacker would not have. So your mobile device, your biometrics, such as your face or your fingerprint, a hacker typically would not have that. So identity helps 
However, the big question is what happens next? So it doesn't really matter how the user is authenticated. As you can see, once I'm, once I'm into the system, um, the next thing is where we need that additional layer. So what Microsoft is, they've come up with something called a zero trust approach. And they've essentially said it's three parts. So you can see in this slide, it says that we've got secure authentication, conditional access and identity protection. So multi-factor authentication, passwordless authentication is being provided through that secure authentication mechanism. So in addition to a username and password, you also need to log in with an additional item, your smartphone, your fingerprint, your biometrics, Windows Hello. So once you're in to the system, of course, how do we uh, provide those doors with that card lock inside an IT system? Two solutions. One is Azure AD conditional access, and the other one is a feature called identity protection. Just before I get into conditional access, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flip over to a quick demo and give you a look at identity protection. So traditional IT, of course, if I go, this is Microsoft 365, I can go into my user accounts and I can go into my active users here. Um, and this, again, as I said, this really just deals with authentication. So once the user is authenticated. Now, of course, whether you're managing your users in Microsoft 365, in Microsoft Dynamics, in Microsoft Teams, um, it doesn't really make any difference because the directory service for the cloud, of course, is provided by Azure Active Directory. So what I want to do is I'm going to go into Azure Active Directory here. And again, you can see I can manage all my users and my groups and so on. I'm going to scroll down and uh, I'm going to go into the security portal within here. Now, uh, obviously, this session is all about conditional access. But before I show you that, I want to talk just a little bit about identity protection because identity protection and conditional access kind of go together like peas and carrots, if you will. So I'm going to go in here and I basically have two options. So when I talk about um, You've got two settings here, really, that are of interest, a sign in risk policy um, and a user risk policy. What do we mean by that? Well, essentially, it's well known that hackers typically um, have targeted interests within a company. So, for example, if you're a CEO or a CTO um, or a chief security officer, an IT admin, an accounts person, somebody like that, typically you are of interest to a hacker, yes? Um, so what we need to do is we need to basically identify all our sensitive users and basically label them, or in this case, put them in a bucket. So I'm going to, first of all, we go to a user risk policy. And um, the first thing we need to do is we need to identify our users. So you can either do include um, these particular users or uh, include everyone except. So you can either do like a, a whitelist or a, a blacklist, if you will. So you can see here, I've identified three of my core users within my organization. So I click on done there. And I'm now going to say, OK, these users um, under these conditions, and this is basically where I'm categorizing my user. So what's the user risk? My, in this case, my user risk is high. So these are really my high risk users. OK, so that's the first thing. Um, then I can put in some controls. And typically, the only control in here is I can either allow access or require a password change. So if a risky, so if you're using some of the other Microsoft services, 
So, for example, for example, advanced threat detection and advanced threat detection detects. Hang on, you're logging in from an undisclosed location. It'll basically flag that up as a risky event. And if you've got a user here who's a high risk user, it's basically saying, OK, do you want to block access or allow access, require a password change and so on? So I'm going to select that. So that's the first thing. Now, initially, when when I looked at this, I thought, OK, so what? You'll see in a moment. All right. So the next thing then is this is a obviously this is the overall risk policy of that user. So the next thing is what about the sign in risk? So what about remote users who are maybe traveling or in hotels or in airports? What are the what's the remote risk for this user? So again, what I've done is I'm going into users, I've selected my three users again, and again, I place them into that sensitive um, bucket. Um, uh, again, I can choose conditions, and again, I've selected high risk, okay? So I'm saying they're a high risk user. So in this case, I'm choosing controls, and again, I can either say, do you want to block access or allow access and i've said i'm going to allow access if they come in uh, remotely um but i want them to use multi-factor authentication in this case so i want them to use the mobile app facial recognition windows hello uh, and so on okay so that's the first thing that i've done is all i've done here is i've uh, gone through my um, employees within the organization and I've identified key people, key people who could potentially um, are targets for the bad guy. OK, now there are again, this session is not about um, ident identity, so I'm, I'm not going to kind of focus on this. But there's lots of things like risk detections, there's reporting, all kinds of cool stuff here as well. So that's the first thing that I wanted to show you, um, the identity protection policies. So I'm going to go back to the security center. And right now I'm just going to flip back to the slides before we continue. So what we've just seen then is an example of identity protection, and it's very much part of this Microsoft Zero Trust approach. So moving to the next slide, what is conditional access then? Essentially what conditional access is, as you can appreciate, users who log on to Microsoft 365 or Microsoft Azure typically generate lots of signals. So who the user is, the device that they're logging in from, the location where they are, the application that they're using, a document that they're using. There's lots of signals. So what happens is conditional access takes those signals and looks at various conditions that have been set up. So from those conditions, um, it then determines whether you gain access or not. OK, um, conditional access actually replaced an older feature. It was called Active Directory Federation Services Claim Rules. So if you're familiar with that, this kind of very much kind of follows on from that. So three elements to it. It gathers the signal. It makes a decision, not just based on the policies, but it also uses very clever artificial intelligence and machine learning. And from that decision, it then enforces it. So either the user gets access or the user doesn't get access. So usage scenarios, um, some examples, of course, you might have remote users. You might have users who travel a lot with their job. Um, a, a good example is privileged administrator roles. So in Azure Active Directory, of course, we don't want everybody to be a global admin. So you might, for example, and maybe make ju some junior admins user administrators. You might have a SharePoint administrator. Um, and what we can do is we can require multi-factor authentication for these uh, um, administrators. Um, I've been talking about multi-factor authentication um, 
not all applications support multi-factor authentication. And if you're still using pieces of software that don't support MFA, so for example, legacy applications um, that only require a username and password, this can be a massive security risk within an organization. So one of the things that you want to do is you very much want to curtail uh, the use of that. So with conditional access, you can actually force that. You can also set up very cleverly location controls. So for example, you've got head offices, you may have uh, numerous branch offices. And for example, you, you might say, okay, in the London office today, um, if you're in the office, you don't need to use multi-factor authentication because you're in a trusted location. Whereas if you're traveling and, in, and you're in a hotel somewhere, that's not a trusted location, thus, I need an additional form of identification from you in case, you know, Windows Hello, for example. So conditional access, as I said, what it does, it gathers signals. So for example, the user's location, the application that the user's using, um, it looks at, for example, the user's device. So is the user's device registered in Azure Active Directory? Are you managing it, for example, with Microsoft Endpoint Manager, uh, AKA used to be known as Intune. Um, and, it, and it looks at the real time risks. So it, it basically, it takes that risk level that we've just looked at and it says, is this a risky user? Um, it will verify every single access attempt. There is no way around it, it's very clever. OK, and it looks at the apps and it will then determine whether that user gets in. So what it actually does and how it works is a little bit like this. So when the user logs in, the user is prompted for credentials. Um, it's then sent securely to Azure Active Directory. And at that point, we determine that conditional access is enabled. So basically what conditional access is doing, as it says here in the slide, it's saying, okay, when this happens, I want you to do this. So it's making a decision. Um, so whether access is either denied or if it's approved. And if you look under the slide here, um, what's not commonly known is that for conditional access rules, you can actually put in, um, you, can, you can put numbers on it. And when you number your policies, they actually run in order, and that can be really useful. So you see here, we've got a serial number of CA01, and the cloud app is Dynamics. The response is, I require MFA for the marketing group when, if they're on external controls, okay? And that's how the conditional access policy is constructed. So as I said, we have a series of signals based on user or group membership or even admin role. Um, it, you can base it on IP address location, and this can be obviously a specific IP address or geolocation. On a user specific device, and whether that device is managed in um, Intune or Microsoft Endpoint Manager. So if it's a managed device, great. But you can also have policies for unmanaged devices as well. So for example, if you've got guests coming in on your environment, let's say in Microsoft Teams, for example, um, you, you might want to have a conditional access policy for them. Um, if the user is using a specific application. Um, also, the real-time risk detection is calculated as well based on those um, settings that I just showed you a moment ago. Um, please note that conditional access also fully integrates with MCAS, so cloud app security, which rocks, by the way. Once you've uh, created the policy, you can then determine, okay, how are we going to enforce it or the control? So do we require multi-factor authentication? Do we require the device to be compliant? So for example, um, if it's a managed device, it needs to be up to date, it needs to be patched. Um, the user, you may require multi-factor authentication for it. Does it require the device to be domain joined or hybrid domain joined? Um, is the app approved? So you might have a list of approved apps 
uh, within your organization. So the session controls, you can use things like, you can, you can even go more granular. So I could have the situation where I might say, okay, I've got my app here. I'm allowed to open this particular document on this particular app in this particular location and so on. Um, it's that granular, seriously. Um, so you can use um, a conditional access app control policy. So, for example, you can block downloads, of, you know, if they're in an, uh, an unapproved location, for example, you can block downloads to the app. You can say no cut, copy and paste is allowed. No screenshots are allowed to be taken and it monitors uh, risky behavior. Um, you can also monitor things like sign in frequency uh, as well. And you can have things like persistent browser sessions, which I'll talk about in a moment. One really clever thing that you can set up is something called conditional access service dependency policies. Um, and with the dependency policies, you've basically got two types. You can have something called an early bound policy or a late bound policy. So for example, an early bound policy, uh, here the user must satisfy SharePoint before they can sign into Microsoft Teams. And likewise, with a late bound policy, uh, the Microsoft Teams, um, which is accessing Planner and Office, must act, access SharePoint as well. So it can something must happen before or something must happen afterwards. So it's quite clever. So let's have a demo of uh, Microsoft Conditional Access for Azure Active Directory. And before we go into policies, um, before I start creating some policies, there's just a couple of things that you might want to do first before you start. So I mentioned this thing called name locations, named locations. Um, so you can create a new named location or you can also configure a set of MFA trusted IPs, IP addresses. So if you've got different branch offices, you might want to say, OK, these are um, multi-factor authentication trusted. In other words, the user will not be prompted for MFA with those. Um, here's an example. So if I go in here, I've just created one called Oslo. And as you can see, you can either do it by IP address range or by a country or a region. Um, you can also include unknown areas as well. So you can add in, you can just go in here and add in the different regions. Um, I happen to work a lot in Norway, and this is one of the reasons I put Norway in. So once you've done that, that's my uh, secured, uh, my, my locations, my named locations. Now, the other thing that you can also do, um, this is new, can, uh, custom controls, I'll mention that uh, shortly. You can also put in a terms of service. So if users are connecting and users are authenticating on devices, um, again, it's, you know, you may be in an industry where you want your users to um, accept your terms and conditions or an acceptable usage policy. So again, you can create new terms and conditions here. OK. Um, and the others I'll come back to in a second. So um, first up, then let's have a look at policies. Now, out of the box, we get a few what we call baseline default policies. All right. Uh, I can uh, and you've got some tools here so you can either create a new policy and any policies that you've created, by the way, this is clever. You can use this what if tool. And this is basically a try before you buy. Um, so before you enforce the policy, this can go in and it'll give you an idea of how it's going to affect a user. So what I've done is I've created already uh, a policy to show you. And this is my Oslo HQ policy, my o Oslo headquarters policy. OK, so first of all, assignments. So I'm going to go into assignments and you again, you can do an include or an exclude. You can do it for all users. In this case, I'm selecting users in groups. Um, I'd like to point out, of course, you can have multiple policies. OK, so in this case, I've only got one policy, but you can have multiple policies. So you can create policies for guests, 
and external users. You can create policies for different directory roles. So again, I mentioned that you have a number of different administrator roles. We call these privileged roles. Or um, again, you can just go for uh, regular users and groups. So again, right, you can do this for individual users. What I've done is I've gone and added in the sales and marketing group, okay? So once you've done that, I'm just simply gonna click on done. Um, in fact, I've already done that, click on that. So I'm saying, okay, anybody in the sales and marketing group who are using these applications, um, you can either do it through selected apps, so I can add in specific applications, or you can do it through all cloud apps. Can I please just mention, if you're looking to manage persistent browser or cookie sessions, so for example, if you log on to Office 365, uh, and when you log in, um, you'll maybe notice that if you log out and then come back in the next morning, it doesn't prompt you for your credentials again. And the reason for this is there is something called a session lifetime control in the cookie, the piece of code that's in the browser. Um, so it recognizes you, yep, yeah, that's fine. But there are situations where you might not want that. For example, if you're in a bank or some kind of sensitive area. So when, when a user logs out or the session ends, you want them to actually log back in again. So if that's important to you, then you need to do it for all cloud apps because there are certain features that will only work with all cloud apps. So some of the features won't be available and, and I'll show you that in a moment. So for the purpose of this demo, what I've done is I've just gone into the applications and this is a complete list of all the applications that's in our organization. And I've just gone ahead and I've just selected uh, three of these, okay. So I'm saying any users who are using these applications, they need to meet these conditions. So first of all, um, do they represent a sign-in risk? Remember this a few moments ago? So yeah, this is my identity protection kicking in here. So these are risky users, okay? Um, and you can say who are using um, an Android and an iOS device. Again, you can have Windows and Mac OS as well. So you can have Macs and PCs as well. Uh, locations. So I've said, OK, anybody who's a member of the sales and marketing group who are using uh, Apple or Android devices and they're in this selected location in the Oslo office. And um, you can also use the uh, client app preview. I'll come back to that in a second. With the device as well, is it a managed device? So are you managing the device through Microsoft Endpoint Manager? So if you were, um, again, it's monitoring all device states, but I could exclude. So for example, I could say it doesn't need to be domain joined or the device Maybe you're saying maybe you want the device to be marked as compliant. OK, so that means I'm, I don't want any, for example, any jailbroken devices uh, on my network because that could uh, have a risk. So I'm going to click OK there. And I'm going to click on done. All right. So the users, the apps, the conditions. So now how are you going to control that? So uh, I'm, I'm a, are you going to block or grant access? So I'm going to grant access, but I'm going to require multi-factor authentication. Um, again, these are the, do you require it to be Azure AD domain joined? Does it require an approved app um, or uh, app protection policy? Okay, so and um, are you going to require all of the selected controls or only one of them, yes? So you can see there's a couple here. So you're gonna require all of them or only one, all right? So that is the access control. And then you've got the session control here. 
Um, and this is if you're using conditional access app control policies. Um, the sign in frequency. So some of these, first of all, you'll notice that you can set a frequency. So um, again, I've got some slides on this in a moment. But for example, um, you might want to say, um, you know, after seven days, the user needs to re reauthenticate, or how long can the user um, remain in for? The persistent browser session again depends on uh, whether you're using all or just some uh, applications. So for the purpose of this, I'm going to leave that uh, closed. OK. So do I want to uh, switch the policy on? Um, we have this cool reporting mode. So this is, again, a what if scenario. It gives it gives you uh, an idea of what the policy would do. For the purpose of the demo, I'm going to click on save. So there we go. I have now created my Oslo HQ policy. OK, so that was a quick demo of conditional access. Really exciting feature. I mentioned the conditional access policies. Now, in the demo, I just called my policy Oslo policy. But as I've said, what you can do is you can give your policy a serial number, a unique number. And where that's really useful and really powerful is, is this feature. It's called Resilient Access Control Solutions. So basically what happens in an emergency, if something fails or something happens, then this policy will kick in. So you can see EM01, enable in emergency, MFA disruption. So if there is, for some reason, a disruption in the multi-factor authentication service or something happens, in this case, it's saying, OK, it requires a hybrid joined machine for VIP users. So they can only join, they can only get access to their data if they're using an approved machine. OK, I love this feature. OK, and because, I mean, let's face it, things do go wrong, um, you know, um, one of the reasons why uh, a, a cloud vendor will give you 99.99% uh, uptime is no nobody can give 100% uptime, and occasionally things happen. So if a service is offline, then this would definitely protect you. So you can imagine if, if you were in a bank, if this was a CEO or a user with a very, very sensitive uh, role in an organization, this would really help you. So if the MFA service is offline, then yes, they can access their exchange, but they can only do it from an authorized hybrid joined uh, machine. I love this. Resilient access control. So conditional access. Um, as I mentioned earlier, one of the problems with legacy authentication, legacy authentication, of course, is where users are just logging on either through using old applications. So if you can imagine Microsoft Outlook using something like IMAP or POP3 or something like that, that's pretty legacy. These, these are old protocols. Um, maybe you've got apps that are using um, old authentication, so that just require um, things like um, username and password so they don't support the oauth protocol so multi-factor authentication protocol so in this case one of the things you definitely want to do is you want to disable access to this um, and you can do that in two places you can either do it in the azure active directory sign-ins area uh, and you can see there's something called client apps and there's a filter or you can go to the conditional access policy, client apps, and other clients. Um, so this is basically what it looks like. Um, and this is how to, to get there. So this is the conditional access blocking legacy authentication. Let me just show you this very quickly. So in this demo, we'll talk about the, the um, legacy apps, so blocking the legacy applications. So you can do this in one of two places. So here we are in the Active Directory, uh, Azure Active Directory Admin Center. And if I just scroll right down to the bottom in the monitoring area, you can see it's called sign-ins. And in the sign-ins area here, 
Um, this shows you all the authentications that are taking place. You can go into the filters here, and if I scroll down to the filter, one of the options says client app, okay? So you can filter by a client app. That's the first thing. So the second thing that we can do, that's for monitoring, um, is if I go back into security and go back into conditional access, uh, what we have is in the, if I open up my Oslo policy again, cloud apps and actions. Yes, so if I go back into my cloud apps and actions and um, in my, just expand that a little bit. Okay, um, so back into the condition. And in the condition, I mentioned this client app preview. So in here, you can see, uh, select the client apps that this policy will apply to. Um, so modern authentication clients, Exchange, Active Sync, and other clients. So the two lower ones are legacy, all right? Definitely other clients. So you, you definitely want to make sure that that checkbox is out because you don't want unless you have a separate policy to block that, okay? Because these don't support multi-factor authentication. So in other words, you're only supporting MFA clients here, all right? That's, that's really important. So the next side we're gonna talk about is something called custom controls. And out of the box, conditional access was originally designed, of course, for Azure AD applications or Microsoft 365. But what we're finding is more and more customers, of course, develop their own applications, develop their own services. And a common question is, hey, you know, that would be really useful. Can I integrate that with my product or my app? And the answer is absolutely yes. Um, so this allows users, as it says, to be redirected to a compatible service um, before they get access to Azure AD. Um, it, please note that it does require a P1 premium uh, license, um, but once they're validated, the conditional access flow will then continue for that application. So it's perfect for additional services. So conditional access custom control, you can see that there are a huge number of providers already, and this list is actually growing uh, longer and long, uh, longer and longer. Uh, just a little note at the bottom, at the moment, as it says, custom controls cannot be used with identity protections uh, automation feature for multi-factor authentication for PIM. Um, I put in a document reference in there, uh, docs.microsoft.com, that gives more details. It is hoped that this will change in time. So the first step then is when you click on custom controls, um, you can see this dialog box turns up and it's got some sample text in it, a sample code. And it's basically saying this is what the code should look like. So what we do is we then collect the code from the third party provider and we replace it. We replace what was there originally with that code. So now you go off and you continue creating your conditional access policy. So as you can see, what happens is when the user now logs in to Office 365, um, Office 365 now says, hey, you want to use this particular app, you've got to go through conditional access. So again, yep, you click that. And of course, um, if you're approved, then the user gets access to the application. So really clever. So um, authentication session management. Um, one of the nice things is um, if you are using um, authentication or access tokens, when you get authenticated in Azure or 365, I've mentioned it, it produces a token. Another word for a token, of course, is a cookie. Uh, and one of the things that you might want to do is, as I say, if you work in a bank, um, the default setting, by the way, is that um, uh, these cookies l can live for quite some time. So in other words, when you come out of a browser and you then go back in, your session will continue. You may not want that if you're in a sensitive job, 
So authentication session management, um, uh, again, there's a whole number of reasons here. So one of the things that you can control um, is something called uh, user sign-in frequency. And as it says here, it, can, it defines the time period before the user is asked to sign in again. Please note that the default here, the default configuration is 90 days. Now, you might think, oh my goodness, I really don't want that. I want something much less. So um, again, I can control that. So again, what I'm going to do is go back into my conditional access uh, slide here, as you can see the next slide, um, and it's talking about uh, session controls here. And as I mentioned, you can uh, do it for hours, minutes, days, whatever, whatever suits you. So in this example, it's changed from the default 90 days to uh, the default 30 days here. Okay. So this is sign in frequency. So do remember that the default is 90 days. So what about something called a persistent browser session? Um, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, um, if you're using um, different applications, um, the problem is that uh, a typical browser doesn't know the difference between one cookie and another. So when you log on to a session with 365, there's only one cookie. So this is one of the reasons why this will only work if you're using all apps, so all cloud apps. So you need to create a access policy for all apps. If you don't, by the way, this will be grayed out, okay? Just to uh, make that clear, all right? So if you have, let's say you've only selected one or two cloud apps above there, then this, this whole section will be grayed out. So you need to choose all apps here, just to make that um, point. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go up to, uh, this is back me back in my Oslo policy. I'm gonna go into cloud apps or actions, and instead of selecting uh, specific apps, I'm actually going to choose all apps here, okay? Um, you can see you get a little warning here, so be careful the permissions you put in here. It could lock users out, so just be very, very careful with that. So I'm going to click on OK, um, and then now I can uh, scroll down. And if I come to the session area here, you can now see that these are enabled so they're kind of they're lit up if you will um, and I can go into persistent session and I can choose a persistent session so uh, I can say is it going to be never persistent always persistent and so on so I could specify yes it's going to be an, a, an always persistent cookie session or it's never persistent the other thing that you can do, as I've said, is you can control, um, for, you know, I can say hours. So, for example, I might say, um, you know, 20, 24 hours, for example, or 24 days or something like that. Um, so that's what we mean by the sign in frequency here. All right. So uh, it's very important that you understand that because um, again, do remember that this only works with if you're choosing all cloud apps. That's important. OK, so I'm just going to save that. And there we go. So the next thing that I'd like to talk about is conditional access and application protection. So if you've got an E5 subscription or you've purchased cloud app security, then you get an additional layer of security. Um, with conditional access. And MCAS um, completely um, integrates with conditional access security. So uh, and what does it essentially mean? Well, you see this middle layer here. So what it does is it first of all checks the device that it's compliant with Intune or um, Endpoint Manager. It then checks the user's behavior. So one of the nice things that MCAS does is it's looking at the user's behavior. Is the user logging on from a, um, a, an undisclosed location? Maybe they've, or, you know, maybe they're using unusual login behavior. 
So, you know, they've logged in today from Oslo, but 10 minutes later, they log in from Tokyo. That's impossible travel. That's not right. Or likewise, they're in the office on a Friday night doing mass downloads of files. Again, that's not right. There's something wrong there. So um, there's a lot of artificial intelligence machine learning into it. It also checks the user's organization if it's a guest location and also things like um, uh, the, the location where the user currently is. Are they allowed to access this file using this app in this location? So one of the things that we can do is we can use um, something called conditional access application control. And you can use a custom policy for this. So for example, as the slide says, you can, you know, let's say I'm in a hotel, I'm not in an, in an authorized location. You might want to block the downloads. So, you know, you don't want like salespeople taking copies of sensitive information when they're out on the road, for example. Um, you can block cut copy paste in an application. You can block uh, taking of screenshots and so on. This is a really nice feature. Um, this is configurable in the uh, conditional access control in uh, Cloud App Security. Just one thing I mentioned, by the way, it does require an, uh, an Azure AD Premium P1 license, and you also need to have an active Cloud App Security subscription as well. Again, all of these you get with that E5 subscription. Okay, so what about tips and best practices? Andy, do you have any tips for me? Absolutely, I've got some tips for you. So first of all, the, one of the first things that you need to do before you look at conditional access is definitely um, think about identity protection. So with the Azure AD Premium P2 license, you get the identity protection. Really, really important, as I said. OK, um, so you can put your users into that. Are they really, really sensitive users? Is it the managing director? Is it the finance officer and so on? You need, you must protect these users uh, from that, uh, from any potential problems. So privileged identity management, as I mentioned, if you don't, you can also create a policy for your privileged identity users. So your user admin, your exchange admin, your SharePoint admin, and so on. Because if they're gonna be using uh, uh, or accessing these very privileged roles, you definitely want to have some kind of conditions in place. For example, where can they access these roles? Which locations, which devices, and so on. Okay, um, so once you create the condition, um, once you create the policy uh, and you've made the settings, you can see basically when the user logs in here, so the user logs in, puts in their username and password, um, and what happens is the policy is activated. Uh, and obviously in this case, it's asking the user for, let's say, multi-factor authentication. So when the user gains access, what the administrator sees is when the user logs in, they actually see the policy. The nice thing about this is it shows them the policy that they're hitting. So which means when they try and open up the uh, application or the service or the page, you can see in this case, you can't get there from here. And the reason for that is, um, you know, you're not in a secure location, okay? You're not in an approved location. So troubleshooting. Um, I mentioned the what if tool at the beginning. So one of the things that you definitely want to do is you want to test policies before you roll them out. And this is a great tool for that. So the what if tool you can see here, it shows you um, this is what would happen if you uh, ran this particular policy. OK, so what about the log files? As I say, um, um, with um, Azure AD, if you go into the sign-ins, which I just went into a few moments ago, um, now that we've set up uh, conditional access, you'll notice that it gives not just the, the basic information, the user, where they logged in and so on, but it also gives the device information that they're logging in from, um, the IP address, multi-factor authentication. It lets me know how that user logged in.
Um, also conditional access, as you can see, it's showing me right away what conditional access policies uh, have actually been hit against that user. So that's the, the log files in my sign-ins. So one question I'm always asked is, Andy, where the heck is PowerShell support for conditional access? Have no fear, it is coming this year, okay? So PowerShell will be supported during 2020. At the moment, however, it's not. But if you are a developer, then you can have a look at the Graph API Explorer. There are a number of scripts also available on GitHub as well. And this, uh, uh, I put some links in here. There's some developer tips and tricks that will uh, hopefully help. But watch out for the future. There will be some uh, PowerShell scripts coming for conditional access. So there we go, a session review. We've had a look at conditional access. So you know what it is, you know how it works, and hopefully a little bit more of an insight into what it does. Okay, finally, um, I, what I've done is I've taken the liberty of putting some session resources on here for you. So um, we've taken a look at uh, Azure Active Directory conditional access. We've talked about what it is, its usage scenarios and how to deploy it. I really hope you've enjoyed this session and that you've got something out of it. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, if you want to give any feedback, we definitely welcome it. You can visit me at Twitter at Andy Malone, and I really appreciate you coming and having taking a look at my session and stay safe out there. Thank you very much.